And when we look at the currency market, Mark, and you think about the euro, for example, in this kind of environment, what's top of mind for you? Yeah, I think in terms of the play-by-play -play in today's meeting was really all about positioning. The market was expecting a very hawkish beating. Um, it generally disappointed on that. I think Lagarde kind of played the, you know, things are a little bit more balanced. Uh, that context around inflation, potentially, you know, as you mentioned before, that maybe things are moving to the sidelines or being a little bit more data dependent. We entirely disagree with that. We do think they're actually going to be way more hawkish than market expectations and terminal pricing that we have is above market expectations as well. So I think part of it is if we look at our positioning model, it's extremely long euro. It's extremely overbought. And I think there's just some slight disappointment with what the market wanted versus what it got. And as a result, we're seeing some pairing back of uh, positions, especially over the last 24 hours of price action. Well, Marco, I think what strikes me really um, when it comes to the currency market is that, look, we kind of went into this year with a lot of strength when it came to the euro uh, and to the pound as well. The idea here simply being that maybe it's Europe's time to shine, a move away from the dollar. Shouldn't a hawkish ECB, even given the macroeconomic backdrop, still be bullish for those currencies? Why are we seeing red on the screen? Yeah, it's a, I think, again, a lot of it has to do with expectations. Markets are forward-looking. So we've been, and you know, we as the market has been anticipating a hawkish CCB for a couple of weeks. Uh, I would say, like, if you think about, you know, one way to kind of calibrate those expectations is data surprises. And European data surprises are amongst the strongest in the world. And the way that we run our kind of FX models, we run kind of through growth momentum. Our growth momentum indicator is gotten very bullish on euro. And also the most important thing is kind of under, you know, stitching this whole thing together in terms of trade shock, has moved from a dramatic doom loop for Europe to what is now basically a positive catalyst that is allowing European equities and other assets to outperform U.S. assets and the U.S. dollar. So I do think that the, you know, as we're kind of saying here, our view is we're more hawkish on the ECB relative to the Fed over the next two quarters. I do think euro will rally as a, as a result of that. Like we do have euro dollar penciled in at 116 uh, for Q2. So I do think that that, that story is going to play out. But the way it happens on a day-to-day -day basis, markets were, you know, ahead of their skis. There's a little bit too much priced in too quickly. And the ECB, again, just wasn't concrete enough in terms of their hawkish delivery uh, in terms of the tone that would just see that trade kind of persisting, especially into non-farm payrolls tomorrow, which is another big risk event. We'll be watching. And, Mark, just to connect the currency dots further, let's get back to the U.S. dollar. And, uh, and, and, and also in the context of depending on what kind of economic scenario plays out and what that could mean for the greenback. Yeah, I think the most important thing is the signal is not entirely coming from the Fed. The signal's coming from the rest of the world. Uh, and the signal is basically underpinned through one single global theme, which is lower inflation. Uh, so it's very clear that markets are, are trading the rate of change of inflation. Inflation surprises, inflation expectations, inflation data, all of it's moving lower. Uh, I think that's very important because the dollar was a very good hedge for stagflation risk. So if you look at the underperformance of risk parity over the la over 2022, that correlates very well with the significant outperformance of the U.S. dollar. Now, moving forward, what really matters is China's reflating. Europe is gr growing out of the energy in terms of trade shock of last year. ECB is out hawking the Fed. And at the exact same time, the dollar is significantly overvalued on our longer term model. So we are still like bringing some themes from last year. Inflation still matters. Uh, in terms of like picking the right currencies. Uh, growth matters, equity flows matter, valuations matter, and the terms of trade cycle matters. So we are seeing some things that weren't great last year should be major outperformers this year. So I think in terms of the dollar, you should be focusing on China, how quickly they reopen, when the economy accelerates. You should be watching European data, and you should also be kind of watching the Fed narrative. You know, we're still looking for at least another hike from the Fed. Um, and I think where this thing can start to turn is we can see Q1, Q2, Q3 weak dollar, and then inflation starts to get sticky again. And we get worried about the level of inflation towards the end of this year. Um, and then maybe we could see the, the market pricing out some of the Fed cuts we have for 2023, which could help the dollar come back or stabilize a bit. So if you see the dollar fall just a little bit, Mark, where then does that leave the pound? It wasn't too long ago that we were talking about potential parity on the cable rate. Right now we're mm -hmm. looking at 122. If you're looking at a cost of living crisis that still might last years in the UK, where does the pound go? 
<clears throat> right. We uh, we kind of think about it, especially in G10 or even emerging market context, you kind of want to think of tiers. Uh, so in Europe, in European crosses relative to the dollar, like to me, euro's top. Like you want to be buying euro dips. Uh, if we can get below 108, uh, I think that's up, uh, that's, a, that's a great opportunity, especially as, again, I mentioned, we're forecasting about 115, 116 yeah. next quarter. I think for, for the pound, it's, it's in the third tier. You know, we have euro, we have Swiss, second tier, and then we've got stocky, knocky, sterling. Those three currencies have housing concerns. They have variable rate mortgages. If yeah. you look at one of my favorite charts in the UK, it basically looks at the variable rate mortgage relative to real incomes. They are essentially diverging. Um, so a, a big part of it is, is the UK economy is not going to benefit from China reflation as much as the euro. Right. You also have the Bank of England who's on the verge of moving to the sidelines. We get maybe one more 25 basis point rate hike. Yeah. Um, and again, you don't see as much shift into UK-based equities. It's just sure. not, and it's also not the key reserve currency that the euro is. So I think in that context, like the pound will rally if the dollar's broadly weakening, but it's going to underperform other currencies that are more attractive.